Hello. So today's topic is estrogen and progesterone. So considering this topic, as we all know that estrogen and progesterone, these two particular things are hormones, extremely important for the reproductive systems and for the reproduction purpose. It is used. So today we would like to understand the several aspects of estrogen and progesterone considering their synthesis, their mechanism of actions, their uses, and their side effects, and few other things. Now, moving into the next slide. So basically, uh, considering estrogen, it's a naturally occurring sex hormone, which is produced by three particular parts. One is ovary, adrenal gland, and placenta. As you can see, that placenta uh, it is extremely important part, which is gets attached to the fetus. It is also obtained from the adrenal gland, which is present just above the kidney. It is also obtained from the ovary. Okay. So from this particular area, the estrogen get produced. Next, the classification of drugs. Considering the classification of drugs, we generally classify the estrogen into two basic parts. One is natural estrogen, and another is synthetic estrogen. Considering natural estrogens, we are having estradiol, estrion, and estriol. Considering the synthetic estrogen, we are having two subclasses one is steroidal, ethinyl, estradiol, mestranol, tubal 1. Considering the non steroidal part, we are having diethyl steroidal and dienstrol. So, comparing this natural estrogen and synthetic estrogen, synthetic estrogens are more potent than the natural estrogens. Now, one of the most important part that is synthesis and regulation of estrogen and progesterone. Now, considering uh, their synthesis, hypothalamus is the most important part which initiates the synthesis process. It releases the growth hormone facing hormone that is GnRH, which will act on the anterior pituitary. And from anterior pituitary, two particular hormones one is FSH, that is follicle stimulating hormone and neutralizing hormone. These two hormones basically they act on the ovary. Now, after the effect of FSH, the ovary will produce estrogen from graphene follicle and progesterone from the corpus luteus. There is a negative feedback which you can see from this slide that estrogen will send a negative feedback when it gets produced in sufficient amount. It will send a negative feedback towards this anterior pituitary. And also the progesterone, after the release of progesterone, it will send two negative feedback towards the anterior pituitary and also the hypothalamus. These two negative feedback will reduce the release of GnRH. LH, FSH, as well as the negative feedback which is being seen from the estrogen, which will produce a negative effect on the anterior pituitary, which will further reduce the synthesis of FSH and LH. So, this is the synthesis and regulation of estrogen. It's extremely important. Now, the mechanism of action. Now, considering the mechanism of action of estrogen, estrogen will bind. With specific receptor that is estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. So after binding to these two receptors, which is present at the nucleus, and it will regulate the protein synthesis. Estrogen, progesterone, these are the hormones. The hormones mainly act on the nuclear receptors, means those receptors which are present inside the nucleus. So this estrogen receptor alpha and beta, these two receptors are basically present in the nucleus and they will act you know, considering the protein synthesis process. Now, 
the location of H2 receptor alpha and beta. So considering the location H2 receptor alpha, it is present in the uterus, vagina, ovary, breast, hypothalamus, blood vessels. Considering H2 receptor beta, it is present in the prostate and ovary. So ADOS, H2 receptor alpha and beta, they present in different area and their concentration is different in different area. That means the number of receptors are different in different area. Next is pharmacokinetics property. Considering uh, estrogen, it is available for oral, parenteral, transdermal, and topical administration, but after the application, it gets converted, considering the estradiol into estrion. And once it is converted in the estrion, it may convert into estriol, and this estriol gets eliminated. So estrogen undergoes through fast post-metabolism, which will take place in the liver, and mainly metabolized through the glucuronide sulfate conjugation, and again, deconjugated at intestine by bacterial flora and reabsorbed resulting in intrahepatic cycling. So this is the pharmacokinetics property of estrogen. Now, considering two hormones, that is estrogen and progesterone, they have different pharmacological property. Considering the estrogen, they are responsible for growth and development of sex organ, and they are equally responsible for the development of sexual characteristics, which is basically the secondary sexual characteristics. But progesterone, it has a main role towards the maintenance of pregnancy. Considering estrogen, it is responsible for the proliferative phase of endometrium, which is also a part of the reproductive system. Considering progesterone, it is responsible for the secretive phase of the endometrium. Estrogen it is responsible for the rhythmic contraction of fallopian tube and myometrium. And for progesterone, it will reduce the uterine contraction. Because as we all know, in pregnant condition, the level of progesterone is higher. And it, this particular property, that is reduction of uterine contractions, this is extremely helpful for pregnancy to support the pregnant woman. Considering estrogen, it will improve the cervical secretion and facilitates the entry of sperm of the For progesterone, it will reduce the entry of sperm of the because as you all know, the fertilization, after the fertilization, the progesterone level become higher, so it will maintain the fertilized egg for its next step. Considering estrogen, it will stimulate the growth of ducts ducts of breast, whereas the progesterone stimulates the growth of the acinium breast, which is mainly responsible for milk production. Considering estrogen, it is in one hand it will enhance the HDL level and to reduce the LDL level, but progesterone it is responsible to increase the LDL level that is low density lipoprotein that will increase it. So it has an opposite effect towards this estrogen as we all know that estrogen will reduce the LDL level. Progesterone, in the other hand, it will improve the lipoprotein lipase activity. Considering estrogen, it causes the water and sodium and retention which may cause the edema, and the same properties applicable to the progesterone. Estrogen will increase the clotting factor 2, 7, 9, 10, and 3, and it will also reduce the antithrombin, whereas progesterone will increase the body temperature. As you all know that during the menstruation cycle, there is a sudden rise of body temperature at day 14 during the ovulation part, and from that day 14, our normal body temperature considering the subject it increased. Synthesis of progesterone receptors is another property which is for estrogen and the progesterone will reduce the synthesis of estrogen receptors. Now the uses of estrogen. Several uses are there. These uses are very much significant nowadays and very much popular. Considering their uses, it has oral contraceptives. It can be used as postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy. It is extremely important for the menopausal woman 
generally at the age of 45 to 50, uh, the omens are mainly uh, suffering with uh, this postmenopausal problems. So that can be uh, taken care of by the use of estrogen and different combination drugs. It can be used in case of senile vaginitis, dysmenorrhea, delayed puberty, and also you can treat carcinoma of prostate by using estrogen. But at the same time, we must keep in our mind that it has few side effects like nausea, vomiting, water retention, cancer, thromboembolic complications. So these are the major uses of estrogens. Now, anti-estrogens. Several anti estrogen drugs are nowadays available. One of the prime drugs is comifenocytrate. Basically, it is an antagonist. Comifenocytrate is an antagonist. And it competitively blocks the estrogen of alpha and beta in anti-terpituitary. As we all know in my previous slide, I have discussed the area or the locations of estrogen of alpha and beta. So it can competitively block the estrogen of alpha and beta and opposes the negative feedback effect of estrogen. So it will stimulate the FSH and LH secretion and induce self-function. So from this slide, we can understand that coefficient citrate can be used in case of infertility problem. So coefficient citrate uses, the main uses is in case of infertility, in vitro fertilization, and also it will increase the sperm count and density in case of male infertility. So in case of infertility for women and for men, we can use this comifenocytrate. Next is side effect. So it has several side effects like it is responsible for hot flashes, nausea, vomiting, headache. You can use it for loss of hair, cyst formation, smelling density, and body. Classification of progestins. So now, considering just like the estrogen, progestins are equally divided into natural progestin and synthetic progestins. On under natural progestins, we are having progesterone. For synthetic progestins, we are having metroxyprogesterone acetate and hydroxyprogesterone peptide. Magistrol, not just drugs. So synthetic progestins are very popular because of their duration of action and their potency. And various formulations are also available. Considering the progesterone is not effective orally due to the high post metabolism, to avoid this problem, it is given to intramuscular route in oil ways so that it will improve its duration of action and also it can avoid the fast process metabolism where drug loss is um, not desirable. Basically. Now, the uses. So, in case of contraceptions, we can use progesterone as mini pill, combined pill, post coital pill, in actual preparations. In case of hormonal estrogen therapy for postmenopausal women, progesterone will play a major role. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding can be controlled with progesterone endometrial carcinoma. In case of carcinoma maintenance, yes, we can go for that. Postponement of periods, it is popular drugs which will postpone the periods for a certain uh, time frame. And after the withdrawal of the drug, within one to two days, the subject may get the regular period frequency. What are the adverse effects? Fluid retention is there, weight gain, breast discomfort, depressions, irregular periods, pyrosotism. These are the major adverse effects. Just like anti we are also having anti -progestins. One of the main drug is mefipristone. It is competitive antagonist, having long half-life, get metabolized in liver, excreted in bile, and with the interhepatic cycle. The major uses are termination of pregnancy, contraceptions, used as monthly contraceptives, induction of liver, as palliative for Cushing syndromes. So these are the main uses of anti -progestives. The adverse effect, it's having the adverse effect that is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, uterine bleeding, tear density. So, as we all know, that these sorts of drugs are having different applications. At the same time, they are responsible for their own side effects. And one of the major side effects is tear
effect was it. So in my slide, I have discussed the different aspects of estrogen and progesterone. So you can consult different textbooks like Goodman, Gilman, like Eddie Tripathi, like Katzen, like Harrison. So different, if you consult different books, you will get further information. So these are the basic information which is very much required to understand the estrogen and progesterone. So in this video, today up to this, thank you.